Welcome to Gear Check Games. This is part 38 of our commentary for The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker HD. Last time, we cleared the Savage Labyrinth after much toil and hardship. And in this part, we are going to continue looking for the Triforce Shards. I believe we only have two or three left to find after that. See, the cool thing about this mask is that it has a tiny little hole in it that lets you drink soup through it. Mm hmm Yes. It's how the stormtroopers... It's the same technology that allows stormtroopers to drink their morning coffee mm -hmm. without uh, removing their masks. When you when you drink the potion on the front porch, I'm imagining that scene from Thor 1 when he gets the coffee. And he's like, that was pretty good. Another! And he throws the Another. glass. <laughs> yeah. So in the Savage Labyrinth, obviously we picked up a Triforce piece, but we also picked up this neat little trinket, the Hero's Charm. And you used to get this from the Windfall Island school teacher, but now you get it as a result for clearing the Savage Labyrinth, and it allows you to see enemy health bars. Yeah, which leads you to wonder, why does the school teacher... Well, on top of all the other things, why does the school teacher own this? I, I yeah. feel like she, she, there's more to her than she's letting on. Yeah. I think she was like an adventurer in her younger days. I think I, I, I you know, I'm still going with our theory that she's the real bad guy here. <laughs> Lord Piglet. Or some, something to that effect. What would her Darth name be if she was a Sith her Lord? Darth name? Yeah. Uh, you gotta have a weird Darth name. Uh, Getting... Darth Piggles? Darth Pinculus. That's the one. Also, I can't believe it's taken us 38 parts to point this out, but look what's happening with the water. Huh. <laughs> like, every time this... Like, this was a problem in the original version of Wind Waker, where... I guess maybe at some stage in development they didn't consider that you can rotate the camera above the boat and see that the water is just, like, blatantly phasing mm -hmm. through the floor. <laughs> Uh huh. Um, which they didn't bother to fix for the HD version. In fact, they made it much, much worse because the swift sail like exaggerates like how much you bob up and down when you're sailing, and so practically the entire boat goes underwater. Like mm. every time you go down. <laughs> I feel like it'd probably be kind of tough to fix though, unless there's just something. I mean, I imagine the water is just like a plane, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm uh, thinking. Yeah. So, like, I don't know. I wonder if there's a way to, like, put a, uh, put a, like, a bounding box type deal inside the boat to, like, yeah. make it, like, if water goes in here, then we're tearing it invisible. Yeah. But I imagine the wa the ocean also uses pretty big, like, planes. Yeah. Because there's so much of it, so that'd probably cause some problems with just, Yeah, like, it's probably, it probably just more trouble than it was yeah. worth. Yeah. And honestly, it's just something like some guys on YouTube sitting around talking over a game are going to point it out, but, like, nobody who's playing is going to, like, it's not going to ruin their immersion or anything. No. no, Dan, that's the reason why everybody hates this game. <laughs> Didn't you know? That's the sole yeah, reason. That, that's, that's the source of the controversy behind it when it mm -hmm. came out. They yeah. weren't worried about the art style. They were worried about the water clips through the boat sometimes. Yeah. Everything else is fine, except for the water. And that's that why when they made Twilight Princess, there is no boat and no ocean. We can't even we can't even have a possibility for this horrible misfire to <laughs> Wait, happen. Wait, no, there again. is a boat in Twilight Princess. They oh, didn't yeah, learn anything. The, oh god. Yeah, for the uh, the river rafting minigame. That's actually a really fun minigame. The mini fishing game. hole. Oh yeah. Yeah. Both of those are great. And you guys mentioned the art style and that that kind of makes me uh excited for the uh the the next Zelda coming to Switch. Uh, mm -hmm. God, what is it? I Link to the World? Link to the shit. Link to the World. Why can't I remember the name? Link's Awakening. Thank you. I wanted to call it Link to the Past, but I know that I knew that one right. Uh -huh. Yeah, Link's that Awakening. I'm excited. Yes. 
I'm excited for that game. I like I like the kitty little toy like art style. I need that. I'm life. excited to play Link's Awakening finally because I never finished that one. Oh. Yeah. I'm a, I'm excited to play the original Link's Awakening when that comes out. <laughs> Isn't that available on like Wii U and 3DS right now? No. Uh, like DX. The Wii the Wii U is too cool to have Game Boy games on the virtual mm-hmm. console. Why didn't I cut this part out? I don't know, what, what am I doing? doing? You cut out another part, but this wasn't included in it. Oh no, I didn't. Yeah, I think I think I thought I cut to the part. Yeah, because this puzzle like took me a bunch of attempts to get right. You only skip you... one of twenty attempts. Are you see supposed... what I had to do is like cut down a bunch of the trees so that I could get around faster. But yeah, mm. uh, that makes sense. So you're just supposed to hit all those switches so the fire goes away. Yeah, you have to hit them all within a certain uh, time limit. And I um, have not realized something yet. Why don't you just go in the hole? I'm realizing it. Realizing. Go, go Turn the around. Hole. There the you go. Of realizing. Oh, where are you going? Yeah, for some reason, like, when I was a kid, this didn't really register because it was like... Like you have to push, have point the wind um, towards that ledge on the opposite end of the island, um, and then like kind of glide diagonally into the cyclone, and then diagonally again, like over to that little plateau. Oh. And I guess I never really, I couldn't solve this puzzle as a kid because I was like, well, you're supposed to put the, you're supposed to point the wind in the direction you're gonna jump. Hmm. Like, there's no other way to get up there, is there? And what do you get? 30 rupees. I like having a more oh. developed brain. 40 rupees and a chew jelly. And blue blue chew jelly. Which you don't need anymore. I do love that like transition. Like Being bad at games as a kid because like, your reasoning and your spatial awareness just, just aren't as fully functional as an adult. So you get to the challenge and you're like, why did this give me trouble? Mm-hmm. Well, what I remember is... As a kid, being, like, dumb and bad at, like, figuring stuff out in games. But I was really good mechanically, because I just had countless hours to just try again and again and again, and just get really good at things. Uh, but then, like, as I get older, I'm much better at, like, thinking and figuring things out, but I also have a lot less time to just, like, play so yeah. that my mechanical skills are kind of not as amazing. Like, I remember yeah. going back to the original Star Fox for the SNES and just thinking, like, how did I get as far as I did as a kid? Well, that game's, like, brutal to begin with. Yeah. Though, isn't it? Yeah, which is why I was like, how did I even get far, like, as a kid? Yeah. See, that was my experience with, like, the SSX games. Like, to be fair, I haven't really made a serious attempt to get back into those games, like, since I was a kid. But every time I've tried to go back, it was like, oh god, I do not have muscle memory for this. Mm. Yeah, I did eventually beat... It, I, I had the experience with Star Fox and Super Ghouls and Ghosts. Uh, and to a lesser extent, Super Punch-Out. And I did end up beating all those games uh, as an adult. But, like... God, those games are brutal. Mainly mm. Super Ghouls and Ghosts and Star Fox. Yeah. This room also, is... hi, Savage Labyrinth 2.0. Yeah, hi. this room is insane. I love how it just starts out with like a few little like <laughs> mini blends, and then all of a sudden you turn around and there's like three dark nuts behind you. <laughs> yeah. Well, that <laughs> escalated quickly. Honestly, this is harder than the Savage Labyrinth. <laughs> Yeah. Now we got a whiz robe, we got three of these guys now. Good yeah. lord. Yeah. Oh, I, mean, well, I guess you could that's probably soup. cheese this by, or not necessarily cheese it, but make it easier by, like, uh, staggering out the enemy spawns. the magic armor. Or that. There I go. Finally. Oh, is this not like it only took, it, it only took me the entire oh, Savage so Labyrinth to figure out rupees. a piece. Yep. Uh, I feel like that wasn't the case in the original. Yeah, but I think they I changed it for the HD version to make it more like Twilight Princess. Yeah. 
need to make Windmaker more like Twilight Princess. That'll, yeah, everybody likes that one. That'll give rupees a purpose in this remake. True. You know what? I on on that level, I actually, I actually support this change. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is, all jokes aside, is it? It is a good change. Mm -hmm. Although yeah. then again, I guess the fact that you are constantly having a ton of rupees also maybe makes it less of a like d deci interesting decision to choose whether or not it's worth it to use the magic armor. But yeah, yeah, I suppose you could kind of exploit it if you wanted to. How how did those trees come back so fast while you were in that hole? Because they because because God Himself replanted them. Yeah. It's magic. Well, I guess there was a a a Deku out there. What are they called? What are, what a is Kokiri. A yeah, Kokiri. Oh, oh, oh my God! No, Koroks. Sorry. Kokiri. A Deku. <laughs> That's another Zelda-related mistake. <laughs> I gotta atone for. Yeah. yeah. The Zelda, the Zelda uh, wolf ah. pack in the chat's gonna annihilate you. Mm-hmm. They're gonna rip you up. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doomed. Hmm. I'll be even more doomed after uh, our next destination. Another oh reef! Yay. Oh boy. Oh, I yeah, think I this gonna... is our last one, though, so... I was gonna mention that uh, I never wore the enemy health mat, the hero's charm in the original Wind Waker, just because it looks so stupid. <laughs> and it just covers up Link's face in cutscenes and stuff. So I just... Took it. I just Actually, never wore it. in um, I think like the proper cinematics, they removed the <laughs> hero's charm. <laughs> Minus one granny soup. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. Maybe maybe not in like cutscenes, but like when you're talking to people and uh, during some like kind of minor cutscene stuff. Yeah. In game cutscenes. Okay. I I love that you give us the audience that tiny little bit of you turning towards the the platform just enough <laughs> to let us know, hey, I am going in there. <laughs> yep. It's all about that subtle visual storytelling. Yeah, man, it's good. I hope it's the viewers got it. I'm hoping to use this episode as a portfolio piece. <laughs> <laughs> this is how you get hired at Nintendo. They want you to edit their commercials. For, yeah, in this in this. In this uh, 42 part commentary, where I constantly complain about their games that they worked on for hundreds of hours. I was That's wondering what... why you were just cruising, and then I heard the clicking of the gamepad stuff. Yep. Wait, you can hear that? There's a treasure waiting in the sea. <laughs> you know where I want to go? I want to go to an octopus's garden. In the shade? That's a great place. Was I just seeing things, or was this beam of light red? Um, I mean, it kind of cycles through different colors. Like, bright red. Like, noticeable red. <laughs> We're gonna get sued by Paul McCartney's estate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, since that was his song. Uh, I don't. Did George write that song? Oh no, wait, it was, that was. It was. It was. It was Bingo Trey. It was, it was Bingo. Yeah, that was his one yeah. song. Bongo. It's kind of like. It's kind of like. Uh, Beth by Kiss. It's like oh, the drummer wrote a song. Hot dog. Mm. <laughs> For some reason, I my brain put together that you said I'm gonna get sued by Kurt Zisa's estate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna sue Six you for everything you're worth for. I don't know, singing a song about his mini boss. Can Not you imagine? Mini boss, proper boss, secret boss. Yeah, Kurt Zisa isn't even the secret boss of Atlantica. Why does he what care? Why does he care what goes on under the sea? <laughs> Can you imagine going to court and like a twelve foot tall, six armed snake man <laughs> is sitting across from you, <laughs> testifying against you? He stole my music and made money off of it. <laughs> the real fifth beetle. Yeah. Do you think Kurt Ziza and Chris Houlihan hang out? <laughs> yes. Probably. They hang out in the Chris Houlihan room. What's the What's the weird name you got to put into Metroid to max out all your stuff? Uh, uh 
Justin Bailey. Yeah, that guy's there too. He's the janitor. <laughs> I'm so glad I left this in. Yeah, you didn't speed this up like the Savage Labyrinth. That's dedication. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Even though we know... <laughs> That's dedication to making garbage. <laughs> we know exactly that all these reefs are like 99% the same. I'm like a reverse garbage man. Instead of taking the garbage away, I bring it to our viewers. <laughs> throw it all over the room. You're the trash man. Enjoy! <laughs> I, you know what? I really like this mask. I mean, it's a little Majora's mask for everybody. Uh huh. Well, it's not nearly as it makes horrifying. Him look so as, happy. Like if it was Majora's mask, it would have like a horrible, like pained expression on it. I don't know. That looks pretty pained to me. I, I know we Ooh. said it earlier. <laughs> when like, we... It's like that one Treehouse of Horror. Where, like, Homer ends up in the alternate reality where Ned Flanders is, like, the supreme dictator of the <laughs> Earth. And he sends people to, like, like, reconditioning where he, like, like forces them to smile with these, like, metal hooks. <laughs> That's, That's what that face reminds me of. I know we said this when we were in the Wind Temple. Like, what powers we want to come back in Zelda's. But I really hope that masks come back. They're a real cool addition. Yeah. Mm hmm. Well, a man can dream, yes. and we shall dream on in part 39, in which we finally complete the Triforce hunt. Yeah. So join us for that. Good night, everybody. <laughs>